So far, we've seen several techniques that we might use in order to set up an equation in two variables. How do we decide on a technique? And more generally, how do we get started if we just encounter a situation out of the blue? Our first step in setting up an equation in two variables is the same as our first step in any algebra problem. And that is to identify the variables. That is, what quantities are unknown or subject to change in this situation? Notice that at this point we are not at all looking for numbers. We're looking for descriptions in words of what these quantities represent. This information is usually going to be near the beginning of the story, if you have a story on your hands. Or in real life, you'll know what quantities you're interested in relating. If you don't know what quantities you're interested in relating, there's no way to get started on any sort of math problem. Let me give you an example of a story. Suppose that Janice is applying for a grant and the amount of grant money she's eligible for depends on the amount of money she's already raised. We know what the two things are that are subject to change in this story. They are the grant money that Janice is eligible for and the money that she's already raised. And in fact, this story even tells us that the grant money depends on the money raised. Therefore, the money raised is independent and the grant money is dependent. Notice that there were no numbers in that story. Even without any numbers, we were able to identify the variables. And we should identify the variables before we start looking at the numbers. All right, we've identified the variables, and we see that there are two of them. That means that we can use one of our techniques for working with equations in two variables. The next thing we need to do is see what kind of information we're given. One of the things we want to know is, what is it about this problem that suggests that a linear equation is going to help us. Linear equations are the only technique that we currently have available, but they don't apply in every situation. The kinds of phrases that suggest that we might want a linear equation, well, obviously, if it says linear, that means we're going to want a linear equation. If it says constant rate, that suggests a linear equation. If it just gives a rate as a number, that is also going to suggest a linear equation. Why? Because if I tell you a number, that suggests that that number is constant. 3 is always 3. Next, we look at our actual numbers. One of the questions to ask about numbers is, are numbers that you're being given values of one of the variables? Often, we'll be given a pair of values, one for each variable, that appear at the same time. Often, a table will help us organize this information. Something else that a number that you see in a problem like this might represent? It might represent a rate of change. Often, when you see that, the problem is telling you the slope. A table will often help us there again. We can do one step of the change and see what happens. The last thing a number might be is, well, something else. It might represent some sort of desired total, or it might represent a number that one variable should be multiplied by. Let's continue the example we saw above in two different ways. Suppose that we're now told that Janice is eligible for $2 in grant money for each dollar over 1000 she has raised. $2 for each dollar, that's a rate. And since we're given it as a number, that tells us that we really do want a linear equation. 
What about these other numbers? We said that the amount that she raised is independent. The amount of grant money she's eligible for is dependent. So she's only eligible for grant money for dollars over the first thousand that she's raised. So that means if she raises a thousand dollars, she's eligible for no money. Then, for each one dollar after that she raises, she's eligible for two dollars in grant money. So if she's raised a thousand one dollars, she's eligible for two dollars in grant money, and so on. Notice, we identified that thousand dollars as a value of R. We said, what value of G goes with that value of R? That is, if she's raised exactly a thousand dollars, how much grant money is she eligible for? Then we used that rate of change to come up with one additional point. Here's another way that that story could have continued. Suppose that, based on past experience, Janice estimates that fundraising takes five minutes per dollar raised, and reporting on grant money takes two minutes per dollar raised. Janice has 9,600 total minutes available to arrange funding for this project. Notice that none of the numbers that we've been given here are values of either variable. Here, the key fact that we've been given is a total amount of time available. How are we going to handle that? To raise R dollars at five minutes per dollar takes five R minutes. To report on G dollars of grant money at two minutes per dollar takes two G minutes. And between them, we want the total time taken to be 9,600 minutes. Notice that in both of these examples, we've just extracted the information from the story and related it to our variables. We haven't written down our equation yet. That's going to be our next step. Okay, so we're ready to write down an equation relating the variables. There are basically two different approaches we can take. Do we have a table showing values of the variables, or do we have a different kind of information? If we have a table showing values of the variables, then if in our table we're given the y-intercept, that is, the value of the dependent variable when the independent variable is zero, we'll figure out the slope and use the slope-intercept form. If we happen to be given both the x-intercept and the y-intercept, it'll be easier to use the form ax plus by equals ab, where this is the x-intercept and this is the y-intercept. Notice that if we're given the x and the y-intercepts, then we were given the y-intercept. It'll also work to calculate the slope and use the slope-intercept form. If none of the points we were given is the y-intercept, we should calculate the slope and use the point-slope form. Notice, the point-slope form will always work. If we've been given information specifically about intercepts, other forms might be easier, but point-slope will always get us the equation, given any table of values for the variable. So that was the first example that we saw up above. So this is the one where Janice is eligible for $2 in grant money for each dollar she raised over 1000 Notice that we are not being given the y-intercept here. G plays the role of my y. This is not the g-intercept, this is the r-intercept in the first row. So we need to use the point-slope form. What's the slope? Well, it's the change in g over the change in r. 
Looking at my table, the change in G is plus 2, the change in R is plus 1. Our given point, our given G is 0, our given R is 1,000. So we'll just have G minus our given G is our slope times R minus our given R. There we have our equation. G minus 0 is 2 times R minus 1,000. OK, that's if we're given a bunch of values of our variables and we want to come up with an equation. Another way we might be given our information is in terms of things like totals. If we're given information about totals, we just need to figure out what exactly it is we're adding together. And that will give us our equation. This is what we saw in our second example, where we were given information about how long each thing takes and about the total amount of time available. The total minutes she spends are going to be the minutes she spends fundraising plus minutes reporting. And that's going to add up to her total minutes. In this story, we're told that she spends 5R minutes fundraising, 2G minutes reporting, and her total minutes are 9,600. All right, so if we're told information about a total, our equation is going to represent adding together the two things we want to total and getting the total as a result. These are the two ways that we're going to be given information to set up an equation in this course. Either information about values of the variable and how the values change, will let a, which will let us create a table, or information about the values of the variables and their totals, which will let us create this sort of equation.